How's it going guys? My name is Savarish and today is a great day. I have some awesome news for you guys because my Lamborghini Murcielago, the one that has been worked on for months, the screen used one in The Fate of the Furious, that car is going to SEMA, one of the biggest car shows in the world and I've honestly never been there and I've always wanted to go. So. It's gonna be a race to the finish. We don't have that much time. And since we don't have that much time, that means that I have to buy parts that might cost a little bit more money than they would usually cost. And you can see my smile fading because I just spent a lot of money on my Lambo. So if you guys are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy it and consider subscribing if you do. I am at my shop, my very hot shop, if you couldn't tell by my forehead, because I just had this baby delivered and this came from Japan. Now, this, what you might have wagered is the back bumper for my Lamborghini Murcielago. But before I look into that and tell you how much everything cost, and it was a pretty penny, I figured it's been a while since I was in my shop and gave you guys a full garage tour because I've actually been away for a while and haven't uploaded. So I figured I owe it to you guys to, uh, give you an update on everything. So we start back here at this 1995 Ferrari F355 that hasn't really moved and is now serving as storage for some coins and some interior panels and also a Lamborghini rear bumper. The reason why is because I need some help with this and I'm getting some help in the form of my friend Jared. My friend Jared is coming and we are going to tag team this car, basically get that Ferrari shell. There is a Ferrari shell underneath there that that has a roof that needs to be fixed a little bit. But what's more important is that that has a hard top roof and we're gonna graft this onto this car. Now the reason why I haven't done it yet is because it is a major undertaking and I wanted more than one person to be looking at uh, the measurements to make sure that everything is square. I am not a body guy. I am not a body shop expert. I don't know anything about this other than I'm just drilling out spot welds and then sort of lining them up with what's over there. The engine, however, will be serviced because I got all those parts from fur parts everything here is going to go into the sand blaster and it's going to get cleaned and we're going to powder coat everything that needs to be red and it's going to look fantastic hopefully this engine runs just as good as it did before the fire but figure that this car will be a rolling chassis with the engine installed somewhere in the near future fingers crossed on to this thing this is my 2004 bentley continental gt and the last you saw of it i took out the engine that engine that engine is very, very hard to take out. It is a pain in the butt. And the transmission is off of it. And believe it or not, that took an entire day to do. And we ended up breaking a bunch of bolts because galvanic corrosion is a thing. When you use disparate metals, they tend to break off. So uh, this needs to mate up with this. This is my new engine. Well, new to me, it has low miles. And I also got it from fur parts. However, I have a ton of other parts. I have the motor mounts, trans mounts, a bunch of sensors and solenoids and all that stuff. And that's gonna be going into the car. This is what I'm gonna be doing for the next week because this is gonna take a long, long time. And the reason why I haven't done it yet is just because honestly, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big pain in the butt. This car is one of the hardest cars I've ever worked on. And unless you're a humble mechanic, I think you'd think the same. As soon as this engine gets into that car, that car is going bye-bye. It's going up for sale. I'm not sure how much it's going to go for. Somewhere in the 30 grand region, but everything is going to be redone. This is a monumental task, and hopefully you guys share the misery and or success when I eventually put this in and start it up for the first time. But take a look at these babies. These are the tire mounter and balancer. These are my new Ranger products and this prevents me from ever having to go to the tire shop again. I am going to be using this on everything and I already put the new Michelin PS4S's on the Bentley wheels and this is the correct size. Uh, I believe that the size that it had before was just way too small and it looked really dinky but those are the correct tires for those wheels. And now I have the correct machine to put any tire on any wheel. We also got this. We got our peak stack here. I do need to fill it up with coolant. I do have a lot of coolant that I need to uh, kind of arrange, but 
we have the Peak OET coolant that I'm gonna be putting in all my cars. And it's awesome because this is exactly what all my cars need. All you have to look at is the color and uh, where the car was made. Let's see, Asian vehicles and red coolant, boom. That goes in the Supra. If I have European and that's green, then that goes into something else, I have no idea. But speaking of the Supra, this thing is amazing. I love this car so much. And it's on the lift because I'm just making sure that everything is buttoned up because this is gonna go for a very, very long test drive and that's gonna be coming up in this next week. I want to make sure that all the suspension stuff is totally sorted. I wanna make sure that the brakes are good. I wanna make sure that uh, it doesn't leak anything or doesn't overheat because when it goes on the dyno, that's when we're gonna make some serious power. I'm looking at you, TJ Hunt. You'd spent all that time and uh yeah, the car made a decent amount of power, but I think I can make more on my 200,000 mile block. After all of that gets done, it's going into the paint booth and it's gonna get a very nice pearl white. And I can't wait for that to happen. That's gonna be later on in the year. I'm not too concerned about uh, the timeline for this, especially because my fender rolling skills aren't exactly the best. So I think the body shop is gonna take some time and make my mistakes less mistakey. But speaking of mistakes, Check this out. No, I'm just kidding. This is not a mistake. I love this car. This car is amazing. This is the car that basically made my channel. A lot of you have subscribed because of this car. And a lot of you have said that I haven't finished this car and that is simply not true. There are a few things that don't work on it. The top does not go down all the way and I'm trying to figure out why that is. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all the hydraulic components, meaning the pump, the lines, uh, all the distribution blocks, all that stuff. It's very, very expensive and it's gonna take a lot of time to take all that stuff off. If you have the chance to buy a convertible, just don't. Just don't get a convertible, get a hard top and you won't have any of these problems. Also, a few of you have said that this car burns a little bit of oil and to be honest, Honest, it does not this doesn't burn any oil however it did before and I haven't driven it that much I haven't driven it to the point where I haven't even registered the car because <laughs> I can't afford it. But this car is in my shop and it definitely will get used. I'm definitely going to uh, have this more as a, not daily driver, but let's call it a weekend canyon carver, even though Florida doesn't have any canyons. So these are, uh, well, let's not talk about those because uh, these haven't been revealed yet. Top secret projects. Do not look. I'll give you one hint and it's gonna be a very, very vague hint. You guys have never, ever, ever seen something like this done on YouTube or TV before. The 300ZX, however, you probably have seen before, but I'm doing it with a little bit of a twist. This is gonna be on my second channel and that's gonna be at the end of the year. A lot of you have been asking about the second channel, Wrench Every Day, and honestly, I haven't put anything on that channel for a while because we've gone through a few changes. Uh, namely, Andrew, my partner, he got a job, he got an actual job. So that makes recording a little bit harder and we, we decided to go a little bit of a different route with a lot of things as far as uploads and everything. So rest assured that channel is not dead. I'm not leaving it alone. We're gonna have a lot of content and we actually are gonna be trying to do daily. Don't hold me to that, but I'm gonna try to do that in the coming months because I have somebody coming in that you guys are gonna love and he is just crazy about wrenching and getting stuff done and also uh, doing cool engine swaps because this engine has to go. And I'm not sure that we're gonna put the V8 that we had planned because that V8 doesn't make enough power. So uh, that's gonna be your hint. We're gonna definitely put something in there a little bit more rowdy. But this is my SL55 AMG. This is a 2003. It is lovely. I love driving it. It is very dusty and it's very dirty and the bumper needs changing. And let, let's just say it's a little bit rough around the edges, but that's okay. This is the car that I'm turning into a manual. And you guys have been hearing that for quite a while. And I actually did get the transmission for the manual conversion. However, there are a few issues. Mainly the fact that I'm not sure if I wanna use that transmission. The reason why is because the clutch has to be specific to that transmission. And the clutch that I have, it's like a twin disc four puck, which means engagement is gonna be really rough. It's gonna be really chattery and it's not 
becoming of a Mercedes like this. So I'm looking into other options. So I've been in contact with a YouTuber by the name of Skate215, and he told me that he's making a custom, basically a go-kart using this M113K supercharged 5.4 liter V8. And he's mating a 370Z transmission, very similar to the one that's in my Supra. What I'm thinking is that I could use that same transmission if everything lines up. However, that is a really big if, and I don't know what clutch I'm gonna use because the clutch that I use it's either going to be really heavy because it's a single disc and it's going to require a lot of force to press or it's going to be a twin disc and it's going to have some chatter so if you guys have any sort of knowledge on this what twin disc has less chatter what has more of an OEM feel but can handle let's say five to six hundred foot pounds of torque then you let me know because I am really at my wits end with this and I want to get this done because it's a beautiful car and I can't wait to get it as a manual transmission but following right along we have the junkyard twins look at them yay these are the 1987 nissan pulsar nx's i haven't shown these but i have shown them on instagram actually instagram is a really good way to see what i have in store because uh there are some projects that i haven't announced on here but instagram people already know about so go to my instagram and definitely follow you're gonna want to check that out so these pulsars are really cool and this project well these two projects started off as sort of a bet you see avalon king the people that make the ceramic coating that I put on basically all my cars that I finish, those guys said that I couldn't do a restoration under a thousand dollars, basically a three figure sum. So anything over three figures and I lose the bet. But I told them that I have an ace up my sleeve and I got this car and then I ended up having to buy this car as a parts car. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a Nissan Pulsar NX. I believe it's a 1987 or 88, uh, I'm not quite sure on the year, but these were marketed as the first modular car. You see back here is a cool little hatchback section and you can take that hatchback section off and you can make it into a sort of pseudo pickup truck ute thing because there is a lot of stuff that you can uh, put in the back. There there is a lot of usable space back there. But another option is BAM, this. This is called a Sportback, and the Sportback was a very, very rare option to the point where somebody that would wanna buy just a Sportback would pay a thousand or more dollars to get this on their car. Now, that's not how much I paid for this car because it has a little bit of rust, but that's okay. That is gonna go on this, and this is gonna be a parts car and this is uh, lacking a little bit of a uh, engine here, a lot of room for activities. We're gonna try to get this running and we're gonna restore it and it's gonna take maybe two or three days. This is gonna be a standalone build and I can't wait to see it because those Avalon King guys, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're gonna lose that bet. But let's talk about the subject of today's video and that is my Murcielago. Now, that car is getting a lot of work done, not only by the guys at Color Recon doing their amazing, amazing paint work. You guys should definitely check out that video, but the guys at the E3 Custom Shop in South Florida and also the guys at Carbontastic. Now, Carbontastic made my awesome Forge Carbon wheel, but they also did this. I just got this in the mail and I'm super excited. Check this out. This is a Forge Carbon overlay on my OEM panels and it looks just amazing. I mean, the camera can pick some of this up, but it just looks so deep. There's so many layers of forged carbon in here, and it is real forged carbon. It's not like a hydro dip or anything like that. I'm almost scared to touch it, but it looks so good. So I can't wait to put this interior back in. You can see how this sort of slots into here, and that's that's gonna look amazing with the manual shifter. Ooh, this is gonna be awesome. This was actually not that expensive. You can get a custom quote, go to Carbontastic's Instagram and they will hook you up. Uh, they did a great job and they don't have just forged carbon. They have stuff infused with like gold, which I might actually do. And uh, they also have regular carbon. They have different types of weaves. But speaking of regular carbon, I got this as a hookup from Driftworks. The uh, guys that are building a LP640 in the UK and they sent me out 
these. These are carbon fiber door sills and they don't weigh anything. I mean, they're really, really thin, but these are OEM fitment and they're gonna look awesome because my plastic ones are broken. Speaking of plastic things that are broken, look at these. I just bought these. These are the brake ducts. Uh, these go from the front bumper into the brake ducts, the brake cooling ducts uh, in the back. And my car did not come with these because apparently Fast and Furious don't care about cooling brakes. I bought these. These were actually at a discount because plastic brakes on these cars is very brittle. And uh, this one has broken plastic, but I can definitely fix that. How much do you think these were? $500. So 500 bucks for this. This was, uh, well, it's what I needed and it's for a show car and it's for something that's very, very functional because I definitely don't want my brakes to overheat. But all of this pale in comparison to that thing. All right, this is just like Christmas morning, except I bought my own gifts and I also opened my own gifts before. So this is a Premier 4509 official bumper by Veilside. And Veilside is the Japanese company that makes a lot of aftermarket components. They make those really cool RX-7 kits and they make a really cool Lamborghini Murcielago kit. It's actually already been opened before because when I got this this morning, I had to open it up to make sure that there was no damage. Obviously shipping from Japan, you have to make sure that there's no damage to the box or anything like that. And this came in pretty decent shape. Now I got this actually as as a fluke because usually this takes more than two months to get. These are made to order, but the guys at Versus Trading Co, I'll have the link in the video description, they had this in stock and this is a super, super rare item. And because it's super, super rare, this costs a lot of money. I'm gonna let you guess how much it cost. It was 12 grand. This retail cost $12,000. And I'll tell you why it's worth every single penny. Number one, this is absolutely the fitment I need for a SEMA show car. I don't want any frayed edges. I don't want anything that's gonna take a lot of time for the body shop to process. Another thing is this right here. This is carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is very expensive to make, especially on pieces that aren't mass market like this. So these made to order pieces are quite expensive to do. Actually, I'm not gonna take this out just yet because I have to get it to the body shop. And then when we get it to the body shop, then we can take a look at the old bumper to see what, uh, <laughs> what a real bumper and a fake bumper look like. Just keep in your head the fact that this actually has mounts for the bodywork right here. It has mounts for these vents and the fact that this has a carbon fiber piece where the exhaust goes. Actually, this piece isn't necessary. I don't think they used it in the movie because uh, I think they actually forgot. This is definitely a really good looking piece and I can't wait till the guys at Color Recon do their magic and buff this out and make this look really, really good. All right, we are back at the Color Recon customer service center and my car is right there. It looks so good. So they put it up on the lift because they didn't want to risk uh, any scratches or anybody kind of uh, scuffing the car because that car needs to be basically untouched for the next few weeks because it is getting a PPF. And PPF is paint protection film. Now, what that means is that on top of the gloss that's already there, there's gonna be an, another layer of gloss and it's just gonna look even deeper. Now, that hasn't been cut and buffed. That's gonna be done in a few days when uh, the paint has outgassed properly. But you can tell right away that uh, these guys already put some matte black on the back just to get rid of uh, some of that really, really bad overspray. Hey, man, what's up? What's up? Yeah. You so, drop it down. I know you oh, you're gonna drop it down. So on a scale of one to ten, now, how good do you think the uh, paint is? 15. It's a fifteen. It's a, it's a, he said he said it's a fifteen. Okay, great. This car is actually gonna be here for a while. So if you want to see the car in person and get some quotes for uh, some of your own body work, because these guys definitely know what they're doing. Yeah. Hit up Color Recon, all the stuff will be in the link in the video description. So in the paint booth, you couldn't really see how the color shifts, but it shifts a bit red. And now that you see it in some sunlight, yeah, it's, it's a very, very deep color. And it's just so much better than the crap that was on it before. Actually, I can give you a before and after. That was the same color that they used for the car. And you can tell 
but the difference is between that and that. It's like, it's a, it's a complete night and day. Obviously, I'm gonna have to uh, repaint this, uh, but that's gonna be after I get the car, and I have to uh, redo all the wheels because the wheels are also, they're not in horrible shape, but they're not SEMA quality, so we have to get all that done. But they also did some matte black accents here, and they also did this in gloss black. Ah, uh, this interior is gonna be real fun to put back. So this car needs to get done in the next month and a half because that's basically when I turn into a pumpkin. Now, I didn't tell you this, but I am actually not going to SEMA. The car is going to SEMA, but I'm not gonna be there because uh, I actually have a vacation to attend to with my family. But this car, you'll definitely see at SEMA at the Rag Company booth. Now, the Rag Company is a company that I've worked with for quite a long time. They did my Bentley, and they made it go from a complete disaster to a awesome-looking Bentley. I mean, it just looks brand new. This car is gonna be the showstopper, hopefully. So let's go to Color Recon's other location, and we can drop off the bumper, and I'll show you what the old bumper looks like so we can see what $12,000 really means for this project. You guys wanna see something cool? Well, check this out. This is my old bumper that was made by the production company. And you can see that there's uh, a lot left to be desired. First of all, it is super heavy. It is really, really heavy. They use a ton of fiberglass. But they also used a ton of self-tapping screws. You can see how they mounted it a few times and it didn't really take a few of those times. So this went directly into the carbon fiber of the car. But just take a look at this. This mounting tab, the grill goes right on there. And there's, <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly great here. Uh, the grill was just haphazardly put on with some self-tappers and yeah, this, uh, this looks real, real bad. So the way that they got this is not any sort of aftermarket thing. They didn't farm it out to anybody. They took a mold of one of these. They did have a genuine one and they made a mold and they started just making these for the movie cars. I believe they had two or three movie cars. And for the most part, they fit okay. And for the most part, they performed okay, but they just didn't look the part. They certainly don't look the part when you get right up close. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely SEMA quality. And going underneath the car where you definitely don't see it, that's when they start to really skimp on things. This starts looking like a paddle boat. Like it, it just, there's orange peel, there's a lot of texture, it's painted really poorly, and it's cracking right here, the fiberglass. Plus the paint, you can see, it's very, very dull. This is the paint that they use. It doesn't have any flake in it, it doesn't have any shine, and it generally sucks. We're gonna use this, and this is gonna look absolutely amazing. Now, I'm not gonna fit it up to the car right now. Uh, I'm gonna wait till Monday, because the guys here are very, very busy. So when we get this on the car, I'm gonna post that to Instagram, so you guys can check out what the fitment is like, but I don't envision any problems whatsoever. So that's gonna be it. I know this wasn't the most work heavy episode, but it was enlightening as far as an update because I wanted to make sure you guys know everything that's going on. And I wanted to let you guys know that I am indeed finishing these projects and they do have a lot of work ahead of them, but it's it's gonna be fun. I'd like to thank Versus Trading Co. for supplying this bumper. Without them, I literally don't know what I would do because they're the only place where I can get a genuine Premier 4509 Veilside bumper. It's super hard to find, and they're made to order, especially for a car this rare. So thanks to them, all their stuff will be in the link in the video description. Go check it out. If you have any sort of exotic car that you wanna have a really good body kit for, they do Bentleys, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, all that stuff they can get anything you need. So uh, check them out. But until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like mine that are actually aren't in the shop right now, but are getting some amazing upgrades, you guys need to wrench every day.